Today, what's the story on rates? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one that is posts covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today I'm joined by Peter Marshall from Mozo. Hi Peter. Hey Martin, how are you going? Yeah, pretty good. How about yourself? Yeah, yeah, um, having a good start to the week. <laughs> it's um, very interesting times. Uh, you've just put out a release and uh, I just wanted to go through some of the information there because basically the news is that rates are on the way up. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, we kind of started seeing a bit of a change in direction in rates sort of just in the second half of last year. But in the last three months, it's really picked up and, you know, it's turned into a significant trend. Um, you know, we've seen, you know, particularly with home loans, fixed rates starting to head up really strongly now. Um, and, you know, that also applies to some of the term deposit rates. Right. So fixed home rates are some small movements in term deposit rates, but banks are still offering, well, like I say, teaser variable rates at the moment? Oh, yeah. You know, while we're seeing the fixed rates go up, we're also seeing variable rates continue to be cut. So, and, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, Loans where the bank would consider the borrower to be fairly low risk. So if you have a low loan to value ratio, there are some really great rates around at the moment. You know, there's no cost to the banks in doing that. They can lift those rates anytime they want. So if the cash rate, for example, does move later in the year, they can start hiking those rates. So they're not locked into them. The fixed rates, different story. They need to start pricing in their future rate expectations now. Right, so you could say that the banks, when they offer those cheap variable rates, are effectively outsourcing the risk of rates going up to the borrower. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we see them doing this time and time again. You know, I've worked in finance for decades now. And, you know, I think um, someone once said to me that you'll never beat the banks on interest rates. And I've seen that borne out time and time again. You know, you think that you're locking in sort of great low fixed rate and you find out a couple of years later that's not such a good rate anymore and you'd like to be anywhere else. So it's a really hard um, decision to make what to do with your mortgage when you're at an uh, inflection point as we are now. Mm. And, of course, you've got the other point there that you've got some people on fixed rates for the next year or two but they're going to face probably a considerably higher refinancing rate when they next have to deal with it. Yeah, I think um, anyone who's got one of those short-term fixed rates that were being offered um, very commonly throughout last year uh, needs to think about what they're going to do when they get to the end of that period and um, start making sure that um, you know, they're going to be able to afford um, whatever rates are available at the time. Yeah, and that's uh, plan ahead, right? So because otherwise you're suddenly going to find that there's going to be a quite a big uh, step up. And of course, with interest rates so low, the move up, you know, might not be massive in terms of the the number, but in terms of the percentage exposure on the loan, it's huge. Absolutely. Um, so you know, I was having a look before this chat, just seeing what. Um, an increase on a $500,000 loan over 25 years. Say you're on a 2.5% rate now, and it goes up just 1.25 increase up to 2.75. That's an extra $64 that you've got to find every month. Now, no one expects that there'll be just one increase. People believe that there'll be multiples. So for every 0.25 increase, you're looking at an extra $64 a month. And that's on a $500,000 loan. I'm sure many people have got loans that are much larger than that. Yeah, that's the point, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, $1 million plus for many people these days is, uh, you know, the painfully large mortgage they're sitting on. And those movements can definitely create uh, um, significant pain. The other interesting observation I saw in your surveys was that there's a significant difference between the best rate in the market 
and the average rate that people are sitting on. Oh, for sure, yeah. But we, you really have to do your research if you're going to get into a fixed rate one. Um, some lenders have you know, fixed rates sitting around you know, 3%. Um, but, you know, there are other lenders out there that will still do fixed rates for under 2%. Um, again, you have to be careful with that because those better rates are for the shorter terms. Um, you know, you can't get a rate under 2% for three years or longer anymore. Um, you know, as I said, over the last few months, those rates have been uh, jumping really quickly. Right. And the uh, point there, of course, is that if you are in the market for uh, a rate um, worth shopping around, and I think also f for many people, it's still worth checking, even if they've got an existing loan, particularly if it's a available rate loan, as to whether they do actually have the best deal that's out there, because there are quite considerable differences between different lenders at the moment because of their desperation or otherwise to uh, grow their books. Yeah, and you know, that especially applies to the big four banks. You know, they don't have terribly competitive rates. Um, there are rare exceptions where they might have a special offer for a while, um, but generally they're far more expensive than any other lender. And, you know, they might have a good name and to some extent there are people to back up their service levels and other lenders, you may have different experiences, um, but, you know, there are some great lenders out there. And, you know, even just looking at um, four and five year rates, if you did want to go for something um, longer term right now, you can get a four year fix for as low as 2.49% and a five year fix for very little more than that. Um, and, you know, those rates will see you through, you know, the foreseeable future and give you some certainty about what your repayments are going to be while we're going through this rate adjustment period. Yeah, and for many people, certainty actually is really quite important, isn't it? Because you could regard a fixed rate um, partly as an insurance against things going a bit pear-shaped, right? Whereas if you are an on a variable rate loan and rates do start moving up, and, you know, people are talking about the Fed putting six rates into this market this year. I'm sure the RBA won't be doing anything like that, but they probably will be thinking about at some point lifting rates will know more tomorrow um, so a fixed rate is still something on insurance policy and as you say you can still find some fixed rates that actually are still pretty attractive yeah and you know, if you are at all nervous about walking into one of those fixed rates for a longer term um, you know you can always go for the split option I think that generally speaking split loans are great they limit your exposure on both the fixed and the variable and it means that even if you get a bit hurt on one rate or the other you're usually not getting hurt on both of them um, so yeah it's always a sensible strategy <laughs> and that's the point really it's worth thinking about it rather than just setting and forgetting and you know letting the bank just milk you you know <laughs> there are things you can do and uh, yeah. i often say to people you know it amazes me how much you can save if you are a bit more aggressive in terms of um, looking after your interest rates. Yeah, and look, and while we're talking about fixed rates and the pros and cons, I think it's worth mentioning that you know, each lender publishes a variable revert rate, so the rate that you'll automatically roll to at the end of your fixed term. You don't have to take that rate. You can move your loan to another product with the same lender or go to a different lender and find a better rate. So if you don't like the revert rate, don't let that stand in your way. Just make sure that you've got an action plan and you're ready to change things up when you get to that end of that, the end of that fixed period if you're not happy with the rate that you're being offered. Yeah, great advice there, uh, Peter. Now, just before we finish, Josh Tr Frydenberg came out today, the treasurer, and said um, there's this huge pool of savings that people have accrued over the last uh, few months, thanks to uh, COVID and the lockdowns, et cetera, et cetera. And that will support the economy. I guess the question I've got is, from what you see in your data, um, do people with um, large amounts of money in bank deposit accounts, uh, are they getting anything like what they should be getting at the moment? <laughs> um, no, definitely not. But I think the only thing you can really do, if you've got a mortgage and you've got cash, 
you really need to consider an offset account. Now, offset account um, basically means that any money in your offset reduces the amount of principal that you're being, your interest is being calculated on, so you can get a reduction in your interest bill. Uh, I think that's absolutely the best way to go right now. You know, the best deposit rates are well under 1.5%. Mortgage rates are 2% or higher. So if you can effectively get 2% or more on your savings, that's the best place for your money right now. Yeah, I think the offset account option is definitely worth exploring. I'd also make the point from my surveys that savings is not equally spread across everybody with a mortgage. So we know that there are some people who actually are financially very strong, but we also know that there are a whole bunch of people with mortgages that have no savings at all, in fact, under a month's available cash, which means that they very much are hand-to-mouth. And I have a feeling that some of those are really going to feel it over the next few months if rates do start to move up. Yeah, so, you know, the government talks about overall savings levels for households, and, you know, that's just looking at averages. And, you know, anyone who's worked with averages at all knows that averages are really good at hiding details and hiding problems. Um, you know, there are plenty of people out there that have not gone so well over the last couple of years. You know, there are tons of small businesses that have not recovered. They're struggling to keep their doors open right now. So, you know, how the government can just blithely say that there's this great pool of money out there that's going to save us. Now, I think that there'll still be plenty of mortgage defaults when rates do start going up and lots of people will struggle to make ends meet. They'll look for areas where they can slash their budgets and, you know, there might be big fixed expenses like, you know, the kids going to school. No one wants to make that kind of cut. So where are the cuts going to come from? Now, I don't think that this is going to be an easy path out. No, well, I have to agree with you. And certainly in my surveys, there are some doing very well, but there are many not. More than 41% of households in my measures on a cash flow basis are struggling just to make those mortgage repayments now. And that's probably going to get, get worse. Um, so the Reserve Bank meets tomorrow. Um, do you expect them to do anything on interest rates tomorrow? No, no. I think that what they'll be doing is simply reiterating their goal of uh, not moving until we see meaningful wage increases. Um, you know, there's a lot of chatter going on at the moment, um, particularly off the back of the indications that the US Federal Reserve has given that it expects to increase its um, funds rate several times this year. Um, so people automatically expect that the RBA is going to be in a similar situation. I don't think that inflation is as strong here. I don't see evidence of wage growth here. And that wage growth, if it does start, great. But it will take time for it to become widespread in the economy. That wage increase goal is going to be met anytime soon and possibly not even this year. No, it's interesting. The uh, story, it seems to me, is much more... RBA will sit on its hands for quite a long time. Of course, they've got this um, 2024 a monkey on their back, which is when they said rates would start rising. It's probably going to be before that. But I suspect that quite a few of the market participants are getting a bit ahead of themselves in terms of the rate at which um, you know the mortgage rate and uh, the cash rate will, will move higher. But I do think we should also concentrate on the banks because the banks, of course, are going to have significant margin pressure if international rates start to rise, as they probably will, they've got to repay the term funding facility over the next uh, year or two or three or whatever it is now. Um, so there is going to be significant margin pressure on the banks. So my guess, I don't know what you think, but my guess is it's more likely that the banks will do more out-of-cycle stuff before the RBA does anything. Oh, I absolutely agree. I can see that the banks are repositioning their interest rates at the moment you know, trying to rebuild some of the things that they had trimmed over the last couple of years by that low cash rate. Um, and, yeah, I think that uh, the banks will, will be the ones implementing interest rate increases long before the RBA actually moves. 
Yeah, we see it the same way, Peter. Well, I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, as always, we'll put uh, Mozo's uh, uh, URL down below. Um, very important to get comparative data. Mozo has a very good database of different options for people. And folks, shop around. You can save a lot of money even now. Yeah, look, great talking to you, Martin, and um, really interesting time to be in finance and um, just seeing how the different players are reacting and shifting. Indeed. Thank you very much for your time. Talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.